what's going on guys okay so in this video what we're gonna have is the Walker S18 and the Kubota uh, 36 inch stand on mower so we're at a customer's house and uh, both mowers fit on the trailer that was when I had my ranch so in this video you can hear the S18 some passes with it and we're just going to compare the cut quality between the Walker S18 and the Komodo SC1936 so there I am right there now that mower has a 36 inch deck and it's powered by a Vanguard 18 horsepower and it does have the collection system on the back time of the video, we've probably had this mower about a month, but we were having some issues with it, and um, it just wasn't cutting that great. Uh, we paid $10,000 for a machine that's supposed to cut the problem. We were having some issues with it. Um, at this time in the video, we got some of the driven a walker before, definitely you want to try to get a demo uh, in your area if you can, because I'll tell you what, those are a lot of fun to drive. You know, the controls are between your legs and you can operate the machine with one hand safely. That's actually what it's designed to do. have a lot of reinforcement on the welding and design and stuff like that. Um, the Walker mowers are known for you know, really a, a great cut and you know, even stripes and things like this. As you can see here, you know, I'm doing about five or six passes. I think I'm doing one more. Oh no, that's it. Yeah, we're going to do the Kubota, so I'm going to start talking to the camera here in a second. So I'm going to stop talking so you can hear me start talking. Okay. <laughs> Let's go see how the Walker did. We're doing a compare, cut comparison here to the Walker and the Kubota. Now, uh, I haven't sharpened the Kubota blades in about a week and a half, so, uh, but I still think it'll do great. Okay. So we did, uh, looks like one, two, three, four, I don't know, five or six passes. Okay. So, um, you know, it let, now this grass is pretty tall and thick. Okay. It's maybe like eight inches tall. We cut uh, that at four inches, four and four and a quarter, something like that. And uh, we'll do the same on the Kubota. And you have, you know, a couple of stragglers here, you know, tall guy there. Uh, yep. Uh, so we would have to definitely a lot of stragglers go over this again. I mean, it's not bad. When that walker moves. But, you know, and generally in tall, thick, wet grass, you know, you kind of need to do a double cut anyways if you want it really uh, cut clean. You know, it's just how it is. Uh, but there's just a lot of unevenness. So we're going to take the Kubota. And uh, we're going to run this four or five passes over here, see how it does. But the walker didn't do too bad. 
So the difference is the walker's collecting the grass, the Kubota's going to mulch the grass. So, uh, you know, it's not quite totally fair because basically, you know, the Kubota, I mean, the walker is like discharging it, you know, where the Kubota is not going to be able to do that. So I could do a, a discharge. I just don't want it to go back into the area where I'm cutting. So uh, let's go ahead and get the camera set up and let's get the Kubota rolling. Now what we will do one notice. day is we'll do rear discharge and side discharge on a property and see how it does. You know, I think that would be pretty fair. Okay. If you noticed on the left side where we mowed with the walker, it has kind of a, kind of a hazy look to it. Now watch the Kubota when it's cut up. Uh, the Kubota is a little bit heavier, if I'm not mistaken, so I don't know if that makes a difference. I know we, we set both mowers at the same height. You know, I think it's as high as they would go, which is like four and a half inches. And the Kubota just leaves a cleaner cut. Um, it lays the grass down a little bit different. And, uh, if you guys are watching this on the computer, go ahead and switch to your large. Just do some top quality now. Look how fast it took me to mow these five passes. It took me a lot longer with that walker. You know, the turnaround is a little easier and quicker, more efficient with the stand on mower than the walker. Okay, here I come so back. So with the Kubota, uh, I know it's kind of hard to tell in the camera and everything kind of being green. Uh, the Kubota produces a cleaner cut. Now it has its fair share of stragglers here and there. You know, there's one right there, uh, but I tell you this: they're not. There's not as many as what was with the walker. Um, <clears throat> yeah, definitely not as many. The, the cut is cleaner across than the walker is. Um, so what we're going to do, since I normally double cut this yard anyways, we're going to go ahead and double cut it with the walker on this side. And then with the Kubota on this side, and then let's see what that finish cut looks like. In all fairness, now you guys remember when I did this yard a couple? I've been doing this for over two years, and the grass was horrible back here. And finally, you know, she went through one year of my fertilizing program. We apply different type of uh, product throughout the year on uh, the grass, and it just—I mean, look—it looks great. We used to not have that. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and run the walker again. I believe it's five passes we did, something like that. Okay. Alright, so when we were back on the other end of the yard where the Kubota is parked right now, and we were facing this direction, on the side that we were using the Kubota machine, Grass just looked like it had a stripe, better, better green color. Where the walker looked like it was just, I don't know, it just seemed like the grass was more hazy tan than anything else. It's kind of wet. 
wet spot right there on that, that part. It's, I don't know why. When they, those folks put their fence up, they got some rock drainage just on the inside of the fence, and it pushes water over to my customer's side, and it just kind of drains right in there. Uh, that's about as far as I go. I had to hit the rest with the trimmer. Now, we no longer have a safe. Definitely much better on the second pass, but that was to be expected because like I said, this is some tall thick grass It's not overgrown cut it every two weeks, but you know because they're on my program. It's super thick and healthy st. Augustine, okay um, Definitely much uh, Better I do not see any stragglers and that's how it should be most of the time When you take your mower any mower and you go back over the same spot again that same row uh, you generally would get all the stragglers. What I do like to do sometimes is I'll go down one way and turn around and come back the exact same way because the grass that's that's laid down when you pass when you and then kind of wants to come back a little bit when you go back the other way it'll stand up through the deck uh, doing the lift with the blades and then it'll cut it so that'll give you even a cleaner cut. All right so it's not bad so what we're going to do now I think we stopped about right here. We might have went one pass too many. So now we're going to go back over with the Kubota and we'll see how that is. We're going to set the camera up since we're already down here, guys. No sense in going all the way down there. All right. Okay, this is the unedited test version. Okay. So you can just tell on the left side. F60C 
Pagodas too. I like Pagoda. Uh, zero turn motors. Z oh, here we go. Yeah, I think I did one pass too many with the walker. Um, because I should have made another pass with the Pagoda. But that's all right. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, well, I don't know if you guys can tell, but on my end, it's striping better here with the Kubota. See, dark, light, dark. Uh, whoops, dark, light, dark, light, dark. Well, that's five passes, I guess. Yeah, that's the same. And over here, not quite the same. Um, okay, so let's look at cut quality. I know it's hard to tell in the camera. Cut quality, really, the Kubota... Well, they're both pretty close. It's kind of easy to tell the camera. It's so uh, much I better. think I did see one straggler. Uh, let's see, there's one there. I thought I saw one more for the Kubota. I think there was two I saw on the Kubota. And right there. Yeah. So that's being on all honesty right there. And that's all I ever do on my videos, guys. I only speak, you know, what's coming from me. You know, I don't yeah, have any sure favoritism over one brand on or another. Uh, but right here, as it stands, the mulch kit on that. the Kubota, two passes. The collection system on the Walker, two passes. They're identical almost. I mean almost identical. You could tell a little bit cleaner cut on the Kubota. If you were here, you could tell it's a, just a tad bit cleaner. Um, so why would I want a Walker when my Kubota could do the same thing? Well, you know, with Walkers, there's all types of advantages. You know, you can change out the deck with different sizes. Although it's struggling with that 36 deck on this stuff. I could, it can go up to a 52, but that's if you're doing a golf course. I wouldn't recommend going larger than 52, or larger than 36, sorry. Um, so we're gonna take the walker and we're just gonna do the rest of the property here um, because I haven't used it on this property. So we're gonna leave the Kubota there, set up the camera, maybe over here in the corner or something, and uh, go from there. But as it stands right now for this test, this test on this yard, the Kubota is just a little bit cleaner. Um, so, all right, guys. I've used the Walker mower with the um, the back hatch open before, one or two other times. Um, it did pretty good. Um, you know, I was able to do, I think it was an acre property. And uh, I, I did it with no problem. And uh, it fanned out. In, in the back of that hopper, you have this device that moves back and forth. And it allows the grass, the, the thing the grass comes out of inside the hopper, it moves left and right um, as it's on. So it allows better disbursement of the grass inside the, uh, the hopper. So here I'm going to mow a couple of passes, I think, before we actually open the rear hatch. And um, I actually dump whatever grass that's collected there. I actually dump it in uh, on the back patio and then I end up putting it in a trash bag. Um, so... and then go ahead and do open discharge. Now the front we did already, uh, we mowed and we used the collection system on the front and uh, one trash bag and that was enough. Now this mower is a year old. Uh, it was the previous year inventory. Um, they had an open house sale. So that mower was $9,651.43 after tax out the door. Uh, normal retail, I think they're like, I don't know, 10 9 11 9 somewhere right around there. Yeah, here we go. So we're getting ready to dump that, and then we're going to mow the rest open discharge.
Now on the hopper on this one, it's just a manual dump. Uh, some of the models have the push button and some of the models have where the hopper actually Okay guys, we're going to try something different. I'm going to do rear discharge on this, um, this, this other half of this yard, okay? We're going to see how that goes. I just dumped dumped it over there. I'll put it in the trash can here in a minute. Let's do a rear discharge. Okay, so um, oh, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh. The, some of the hoppers uh, are electric dump. This one's a manual dump. And then uh, some of them, you push the button and it actually lifts up about 15 feet and then dumps backwards. Like if you, if you got a tall truck bed or something like that, it'll lift up the wheels. That's really awesome. Definitely a great feature. Um, the major problem I had with this particular model is it just did not want to cut well. Um, when I get over here to the left side of this area where I'm going to be cutting, I'm constantly having to go over areas for it to cut, you know, cut down to the height that's supposed to be cutting down to. Um, I'm not sure what was going on with this deck. I don't know if it's the blades and the system, but I have no idea. All I know is you need to pay $10,000 for a mower and it's not quite mowing how it's supposed to. showing you guys that the little knob on the throttle had come off and uh, so that wasn't very fun I don't know if it needs more adhesive or what probably run open discharge like that on front lawns and other lawns and things like that and be totally fine. Just know that if you're going to be around a bunch of flower beds, depending where you're turning around, it might kick some of that into the flower beds. But in my experience, there's some grass going to get into flower beds anyways. But still, you want to try to, you know, prevent as much as possible. it out pretty good. Probably about a good 10-12 feet. When we first got the mower, it was extremely low on the RPMs. Um, we could barely cut grass. And they discovered it was running at like 2300 RPMs. It should be about 4600. So they uh, increased the governor, and that definitely made a difference.
too impressed. Um, now, if I was an all fair, if I was side discharging with the Kubota, I would still have to make multiple passes because I'd have to recut the cut track. So that's totally understandable having to go over several times with this because it's basically the same thing. One is just shooting it out in the rear, the other one shooting it out the side. But what I'm noticing difference is the, qu qu the cut quality on the very first pass. You know, and generally, the second pass makes it like, you know, ta-da, awesome. But this just isn't giving me that. So we're going to go ahead and shut it off. Uh, we got to trim up the edge and everything. We've been here way too long. And then we'll get on to our next project.